Hello, everyone. This is Daniel Yosef. Thanks again for joining me. I have a very important devotion to share with you this morning. Hope you're ready for it. Hey, um, the topic of our message this morning is God, the ultimate problem solver. You know, in our country, we have many ways to solve problems. Solving human solving problems is a big part of being human. Over history, we have faced various problems that we have had to come up with innovative solutions to. The growing challenges of feeding more and more people and the desire for a better standard of living led to the industrial revolution. The desire for a more clean planet has led to a so-called green revolution, whereby we hope to alter our society so that we leave a smaller carbon footprint on our planet. So solving problems is in our nature. However, not every problem is solved by human effort. Let's look at some of the problem solving strategies that we use to try to solve the problems of our lives. First of all, we have self-help. Some psychologists have said that we are society that is um, highly based on self-help self-help books and YouTube videos and lectures, TED Talks, all about how to solve certain problems in your life. Do you want to be better in bed? There's a video and a book for that. Do you want to make better hummus? There's a book for that, a video for that. How do I get my asparagus just right? There's a video for that. How do I have a better smile so I can attract a better mate? There's a resource out there for that. And so, so many of the things that we would like to be better at in life, there's a YouTube video or an article or a book or a lecture or a TED talk on that topic. How to change a flat tire, how to paint your car. It goes on and on. For simple tasks like this, self-help can work. But there are deeper problems in life that go beyond fixing a dead tire, flat tire, or making better mac and cheese. That can be important. What about deep emotional problems? What about problems that haunt you when you go to bed at night? What about problems that wake you up at 3 a.m.? Unresolved life problems, perhaps about a regret, perhaps about the way a person hurt you, perhaps about a way that your husband walked out the door and left you in the welfare line because he was the breadwinner and now you're stuck holding the bag. Well, for problems like this, people tend to go to therapists. So different from self-help, therapist or mental health help is meant to give you help from the perspective of a human who has been trained to listen and to offer suggestions. However, the help you get from a therapist is expensive. Many people can't afford it. The other downside is that the advice a therapist might give you is completely contrary to the word of God and therefore comes from Satan. Let me give you an example. Years ago, when I was having pain in my heart over 
a ruptured relationship in my life. I went to a therapist about it. I felt disturbed. I felt I had wronged this person. And I had a therapist tell me this following sentence. Well, you can't forgive yourself until he forgives you first. To me at that time, that sounded like the most logical advice I could have ever asked for. And I remember leaving that meeting feeling so empowered. It's only logical that if you've hurt somebody, your forgiveness of yourself has to take second place to them forgiving you first. It seems like good advice because you're putting the other person first. Now, if you're the one who did the wrong, that seems like a logical, virtu uh, virtuous thing to do. There's only one problem. That advice completely contradicted God's word. God's word says to us in John chapter 6, verse 37, Jesus says, The one who comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. The elder John an eyewitness to the life of Jesus writes this in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It took me over 10 years to realize this, but the problem with telling someone that they cannot forgive themselves until the other person forgives them is making the cross of Jesus Christ of none effect. If you have hurt a fellow human being, whether it's uh, your boss, a friend, a family member, and this person holds the so-called karma advantage over you, the problem with taking the mentality laid out by my therapist is that that person may never forgive you. What if that person does not decide to forgive you until the year 2052? Are you going to choose to be incarcerated until 2052, and you might even die in 2034. We have to access a level of forgiveness that we can access now. And thankfully, God has provided for that in Jesus Christ. So therapy can help, but it's very expensive. And not only that, but therapists can lead you astray. Also in therapy, there is a damage in rehearsing past traumas over and over again. A good therapist won't allow you to do this. They'll want you to move on. But being in a room where you just rehearse the things that have destroyed your life, what you have done to yourself or what someone else has done to you. That's not helping you. It certainly didn't help me. If I would have spent the time in therapy rehearsing God's word over my life, I'd be much further along today. But it takes time to know what we know and we have to go through experiences. So now I know better, and I can talk into this camera and let you know what I found out. So friends, there are issues of the heart that cannot be solved by self-help or by therapy. Therapy might give you an angle of how to solve the problem 
but you can also find really good input from your friends and your family, maybe your pastor. A therapist simply fills the role of someone who will listen to you and give their thoughts. You don't need to pay $150 for that. How about an issue like forgiveness? What if there's someone who has hurt you and your heart is like a stone and you cannot find it in yourself to forgive that person? You might feel justified putting that person in a box. But after a number of years, you might come to the realization that you're hurting yourself more than the other person. And yet, even when you come to that place, you simply cannot bring yourself to let that person go. You feel that that person deserves to be punished. And in a way, it's like you're honoring yourself. By putting the other person in prison, you are sending a statement to yourself that hurting you has a consequence. However, time goes on and you just can't let go of what happened. Or if you're a greedy person, maybe you're one of those people like, like Rockefeller. I've heard that, you know, how much more money do you need to be happy, Rockefeller? Just one more dollar. All I need to be happy is one more dollar. And the truth is, no matter how much money we have, unless we're independently wealthy, there's always another financial hurdle to jump through after we've paid the current bill. But greed can be a major problem. God is the only person who can solve the deepest issues of the heart. Let me tell you something that is incredibly powerful that will save your life. It will save you money and it will save you frustration. This might be a scary prayer for some of you, but here it is. God, I have a lot of things in my heart that I'm not proud of. Please change my heart. Please take out the bitterness, the resentment, the anger, the hatred I have towards you and towards those who have hurt me. Please help me, God. I can't get rid of this heart of stone covered with black charcoal, and I need your help. I surrender the condition of my heart to you, and I surrender the relationships that are broken to you. Let me tell you, friends, God has the ability to solve problems like that. He has the ability. If you will find yourself going throughout your day, praying like that in your car, wherever you go, as you go about your business, Father, cleanse my heart. 
change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. So, that might be the best solution that some of you need today. I pray that you would be open to all God, allow God to change your heart today. Trust me, you won't regret it. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone listening to my voice. I know that you love them. I know that they are your kids. And I know that you sent Jesus Christ, God in flesh, to die for them on the cross. You died to save them from hell. And you also died to save them from what's ailing them. I pray that everyone listening to me would have openness of heart to call to you in their troubles. You have delivered me. You are delivering me. You will continue to work in my life because I am assured that he who has begun a good work in me will finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. I pray that each of my listeners would put their lives in your hands so that you could guide them safely through their destination, their final destination, which is eternity with you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.